I guess one of the things that I was thinking about during this and like, I guess based off some conversations that we've had is how you relate to looping and repetition in a, in a non super deterministic manner. And by that, I mean like here you have kind of a looper, but you don't have a start button and a stop button. Like it's, it's not in like the kind of same way that one might with like a traditional looper. I mean, you have a start and a stop when you kind of stand like, up, so you can learn to do that. Uh, I mean, when I play in other contexts or on my own, I have like a board with lots of loopers. Yeah. And I set them off against one another, but that tends to be quite modal. Uh, so... I guess the question I was getting at is because I know a lot of the other loopers are, are kind of esoteric. Like, as far as I know, none of them are the like, I will hit record now. And I will hit play now. Like they're sort of all the loopers I have are a little bit esoteric. This is yeah, actually yeah. more traditional, right? Okay. Because you push down, you yeah. pull up. So the mechanism is different, but yeah. essentially you set a loop, then you can overdub. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit like the Akai head rush, which I never had. But okay. in that you can take the overdubs away, which yeah. I don't think you can do here. So here you can build stuff, and it's you have this awareness that it's like a seven-second loop or something. So you you can't extend for ages. Um, so I think this, putting this and board or like set of pedals together and practicing for this, yeah, that's something I was thinking about, like, okay, there's this use where you kind of use it to stutter echo really quickly mm. and then you can build on that. Then there's another thing where you, you try and build a loop that will be ambiguous enough that lots of things can go around it. And that's actually, that's one of the things I've really enjoyed is, you know, with my other board, often I'm building a loop and that's really like a groundwork. It's really clear where you are tonally hmm. or modally. Then, yes, I might put a different bass note against it. But the idea is that that's the kind of core. And that core can't be pushed really far outside of that. Mm -hmm. So here it's been interesting to think, okay, how can I set up a loop that will kind of put us in a zone, but we can do things around it. Um, and then how do you get in and out of that? And there aren't loads of options. So there's, yeah. You stop. Mm -hmm. suddenly and sometimes you then restart another loop pretty quickly so that's good for the kind of stuff yeah. uh, or you fade it out and that means I can't play as yeah, busy yeah. as I would mm. um, so yeah that sort of for me you have some looping as well yeah yeah I mean I, it, it's a similar paradigm where it, the only difference is here is that I have it so the repetition the duration of it um, gets randomized. So as yeah. opposed to being like mechanically, ba -ba 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 -ba, it's like, ba -ba 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 but the behavior is the same, like you press down and you let it so go. So that looper pushes me to play rhythms like that sometimes. Mm. And then this looper pushes me to go, okay, that's one of the, the kind of flavors I have on the floor, which yeah, yeah. very much feels like, and I don't know these pedals too well, and I have the setting somewhere, uh, and they make that sound. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, okay, I can do this chorus, 80s chorus thing, which is useful to kind of um, blur the tuning hmm. because you have this instrument where the tuning is already a little bit <laughs> approximate or complicated or not equal temperament. Yeah. Um, and then I have this kind of like focus thing for tone and then these kind of noise making boxes and then this looper that works in a certain way. Hmm. So yeah, for me that was like definitely shaped the playing that we just did and when we were playing before with this setup. Yeah, yeah. It kind of puts this thing in that you know might happen, and then you know you're gonna go into this zone where this part of time that you captured is is running through everything else and you have to figure out how to renew it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it was kind of a question because like I've, I've used a lot of, I guess like normal loopers where you know start, stop, like that kind of thing. And then a lot of this kind of thing where um, it's not as straightforward. Although this, like what I have here and what I typically use, it isn't like the, a lot of the pedals that you have where they like do pseudo, gra not granular, but like randomize little blips and bloops. They might randomize bits or they might make decisions like uh, the tensor might go off and like decide yeah. to transpose or. Um, so I haven't done so much of that stuff with this, but there's like a, I guess for myself, I've contrasted a relationship where one is deliberate about um, defining a phrase that will repeat versus one is engaging in a behavior that will use aspects of repetition in, in a way that isn't like a musical phrase repeat in a, in a kind of grounding way. Yeah, and I guess that's what happens with the playing, like the pedal can only repeat, or this pedal can yeah. only repeat exactly. Yeah. So a useful bridge 
for your playing is to play behaviors that kind of go around but in different mm. ways so that you have this time which is very non-malleable and you have something malleable around it mm. that allows you to make it more organic yeah i guess that's my, probably my way of thinking about yeah. it yeah I mean, one of the things, like some of the, I mean, I enjoyed many moments, but some of the stuff that I quite enjoyed is when we both had our sort of micro loops going because yours is, I mean, even if we did it at the same time, they would, they would phase, but because this one is a push pull one, the, there was never a clear phasing hmm. like the, cause that, that can't happen because of the time randomization. So it created like a, a push pull against a grid, which has a, a sound, which is kind of cool. So like we had these textures and then on top of that, we were both playing as well. Yeah, you get this interlocking and that's actually something that is in common with the other sets of that. I don't really have any way of synchronizing all my loopers. Yeah, so yeah. they do their own thing and then you lay them on top of one another and sometimes you're looping a thing that's already looped. Mm. And then I, I like that kind of, it has a messiness, you have to accept that. Mm -hmm. You can't, so actually none of the looping I tend to do is super metric Yeah, yeah. because it's just, I don't have a looper that's set up to really do that where you make it metric and then you add another loop, like some of the boss loopers and stuff are really, that's what they do. Yeah, and yeah. I, I don't have that set up. So I'm sort of familiar with this, but this pedal is less familiar to me, so. Mm. And, and I don't wanna like spend too long on specifically just like pedal, pedal gazing, but um, I do notice that you've put your looper at the end of your chain. Yes. Which sounds like a very like traditional way one might go about doing that i mean i have as well like inadvertently i didn't it was just how i, I passed it up real quick um i was just thinking specifically because because when i would have a dd6 on my board back in the day it was the first one uh but i did have another looper later on but like i, I kind of used it as like a a, a pre-looper like pre pre fx looper yeah i think he, kinda funky. here i want to be able to capture some clean stuff and some yeah. noise and have the two sounds because that's another layer yeah if the noise stuff comes after the looper then yeah, that becomes mirror. more binary. So that's, yeah. you know, I mean, I didn't spend ages. I didn't try them in loads of different orders, but yeah. I think that was the thinking. Like, whatever my kind of output is, I want to be able to loop that and then overdub with different sounds coming in to that pedal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah in the context that I had it, like this, this acted, I mean, because it could do it, the thing that it did, but then it was kind of cool to be able to have that be a static loop that you then affect mm. and then it can be looped or not independent. Like, it was yeah. like, it kind of makes for an, as a secondary looper was kind of an interesting behavioral position. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to have one in either position or with the guitar pedals, because I'm used to being in a computer where I can like reroute things. Mm. That's something that I find confusing. There aren't, I mean, I don't have any yet, but there are some kind of buffers and stuff where you can split and reroute, but it's kind of a natural part of my thinking. But with the guitar pedal, it's much more set up. It's much more linear yeah, you have yeah. to think, okay, this into this into this. Um, but also things get very complex if you, Trying to have everything flexible on the fly and <laughs> like it, it's too much. Yeah. yeah. Um, earlier you talked about, well, you mentioned modal specifically, but like harmonic stuff. Um, here we're playing in a context where there's, I mean, yeah, I have some, some dubious tune, like tuning here and you've got some fizzy, fizzy, noisy, but like we have a lot of non harmonic material available. Um, it seemed like we kind of, we, we did have pockets of kind of modal harmonic, like a bit more clear harmonic language. Um, yeah, like how, when, when you're playing on your own, do you tend to always stay in a modal thing or like what percentage, you know, or how do you relate to it in this performance? Like, yeah, so I mean, actually I've, even these really noisy pedals, you can treat them as noise, but they really re uh, preserve the pitch of the input. Mm. So actually I found that even though I'm like, oh, we're gonna move into this noisier territory. I mean, for me, the most noise-based thing that I was doing was all the muted string, string scraping stuff, because there you have no pitch. Yeah, like non-pitch. Yeah. And we didn't really play that much like that earlier. I mean, that's partly because as a guitarist, I practice that stuff less. So I've been playing to be kind of quite precise and think about harmony a lot. So partly, I guess, I'm bringing that. And you're mm. playing a tuned instrument. Mm. If you were playing drums or something, I might do something different, but we have that possibility. And so I guess when I'm doing my looping stuff, I just, that's the sort of thing that I've been developing is, I don't know, kind of uh, tends to be slow and sort of buildy and a bit post rock or something like Godspeed, mm. you black emperor, or there's that kind of influence coming in or so I'm, sitting there thinking I'm going to play in a mode 
I play something, I'll figure out either what what I'm playing in or I'll, I'll pre-decide or something like that. Here it's more like what emerges. So when have we hit upon some kind of relationships? And the loops sort of also help that. It's like, okay, we have this tonal center, mm. but I'm thinking about it much less as like a mode that is like a simple one of the seven modes it could be something more complex or it could be something that you push in different chromatic ways so right. it could be like a, a b thing yeah and is that is that emergent from just like pitch choices that happen to come from both of us or are you thinking like specific shapes as like i've got this note and i'm gonna go you know like or combination yeah i'm thinking I'm listening to what you're playing, so yeah. that's part of it. And <laughs> that's I the know, first mistake right there. <laughs> you know, you play a lot of freer stuff compared to what I've been doing more recently. Like mm. I, I've done that in the past, um, and I, I've enjoyed that. But um, sometimes it's hard with the guitar to be like playing with someone who's got a really continuous instrument with loads of timbral variation mm. because that's not the kind of instrument. So it's a bit like the piano or something. To me, there's a kind of fundamental uh practice of that instrument it's built around playing notes in this particular way and the physics of the instrument unlike say i don't know a violin which makes it quite easy to do lots of this stuff and to do it continuously and to have all this variation within a note you have to work much harder on the guitar to do that so yeah. sometimes i'm just like oh, i, I want to play the guitar I like it's a guitar. <laughs> i mean my favorite way to play is just plug into an amp and yeah a bit of reverb maybe and then the pedals are nice but there's that's the sound I want to work well, and this this guitar sounds really great like that. So, yeah. so it's partly like wanting to preserve that, and then I'm thinking, yeah, I guess I'm thinking about reinforcing tonal centers or things that might sound more consonant, and then pushing against them. So I am thinking about intervals, and then yeah, there was this bit in the middle where this kind of B majory kind of thing emerged. But I might be like, okay, I'll play an F against that and push it in a different. So I am thinking some of the time more intuitively and some of the time more theoretically. Mm. And then but if you were to respond with something really tumble, then I might move away from that idea and you know, or I might okay, I'm gonna keep playing that and I'll do that thing and you do the noise things. Mm. I don't know. What about yeah, you know, how are you thinking about harmony? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's interesting. Like, on this instrument, it is tuned to strings that I know. I've spent a long time playing, like, alternate tunings or, or varied tunings. Not, like, dynamically changing, but, like, where it's a tuning that isn't, you know, EADG or whatever. So a lot of a lot of how one I relate to strings is um, shape memory. Mm. So, like, there's gesture that you can rely on. And then, to a certain extent, there is, like, immediate relative like pitch relationships and that like again I, I kind of know this tuning of it but not so you, you know. just hear the next note well then, to a certain extent like where you, you know kind of you hear a note where you are and then you can think relate like relative to, to that as opposed to let's say I was set at a piano mm -hmm. I would have a much more um, thorough relationship with where that can go at any given point because I would have spent more time in it and specifically the, the notes are largely static like B is where B is um, whereas here B can be a lot of things um yeah, it's interesting that, and then it's particularly having spent so much of, you know, the last 10, 15 years or whatever, not playing pitch instruments or not, not having pitch um, as an important vector in what I think of creatively. It's like even just this first thing that we played as we were getting to the end of it, I was like, oh, wow, we've played, it was so harmonic with a lot of we played. And then kind of thinking of like, wait a second, I've, the, other than harmonics, I've actually played very little on the fretboard. Mm -hmm. It's just been kind of the open string and harmonics. And then, you know, pitches emerge from that. And then like with the synth inside of it, like there was a lot of material, but I didn't play material in that kind of way. It was just like a micro reflection. I was getting, I was like, oh yeah, we did all this pitchy stuff. That's cool. And then I was like, wait a second, I didn't do any pitchy stuff at all. Like where did this pitchy stuff come from? Um, but yeah, so it was a realization of like it, it's a function of the electronics that that. But the electronics as well it sound quite. Yeah, I mean here pitchy. I do it like yeah. There's a ring mod, and I have kind of like a continuous oscillator that I can tune. So there are a lot of the the more modal moments that we were at that were a function of that. So either loop and or the harmonic, and then this kind of creating a, a kind of um, harmonic language independent of me playing any pitches in, in the way that I might think about that, um, which I, I might have an effect for for the next play. But it, yeah, it's kind of odd when I'm playing pitched instruments when it's not 
something I think about a lot. Hmm. So how I relate to that is I try to vary it, you know, like I don't want it to just be like memory or things like this or just like, oh, there's a B. I know B. We can, we can play B. I, I, you know, because that, that, that becomes a thing as well. So trying to be conscious of, of the holes rather than the, the peaks or the, being conscious of the, the troughs instead of the peaks in terms of how I relate to it. What that means in terms of how it manifests, I don't know, that's a, that's a different matter. Is that like not falling into yeah, things exactly. that are easy that we're trying to avoid? Yeah, like, this, like this it's more, too, yeah. It's like, too straightforward. Well, avoiding, avoiding things that I know I want to avoid rather than um, times in my life where like pitch was a big, like when I was playing a lot of guitar, like piano, where I would be then pushing at the edges of what I found interesting there. Hmm. Whereas now I'm sort of like on the other end of the pitch area where I'm just avoiding the things that I know are not tropes, but like uh, that, that, that would come easily within that in a way that perhaps is not the aesthetic uh, material that I personally find massively satisfying. That's not the same. So it's about avoiding things that you, you think you're not going to like. Yeah. Okay. Even even that though they sense. may be fluid to the instrument or fluid to my physicality or fluid to my like. And would you play things that are kind of more obvious that you do like? Because I think I like to do that now. Yeah, where but I'm uh, like, this is really comfortable, and I know it's going to work, and it, and that's like this is the thing to you. Sure. Too. Yeah. I mean, there's I I have a, a an immense apprehension about that. <laughs> Which is, but I, some of that comes from like there. There's like a locality to it, but then there's, at a, in a larger sense, in terms of like, to zoom it way out, like like human agency and creativity and things like this. I think like, there's there's an amount of momentum that exists that that you can tap into. Perhaps I zoomed out a little. I'll zoom in a little bit more, <laughs> in that I'm I'm dubious of things that sound good, at a certain level, you know. <laughs> so like, and, and even if that like becomes like something on an instrument where like, oh, that might, oh, that's kind of, you know, like, I'm like, wait a second. Like there, there's always anything like that for me has, has a little caveat. And like, what does that come from? And, and I have in, my, in the past examined that quite, quite deeply in terms of like, is it cultural background? Is it like, like there's a lot of aspects of that, that like, I'm, I'm happy to have some reticence when it comes to things that sound good. Do you hear that in other people's playing? Do you go, like when you're playing with people, do you go, or is it more uh, like a lens you apply to your own playing? That, yeah, I mean, for sure, like one has tastes and one has, like, yeah, yeah. And, but, but like the reason you, the, for me, the reason I play with other people is not because I, I wish that they were me and are constantly feeling that that's, that's not what I want, you know what I mean? So I want to hear things that aren't me. So that, that comes intrinsically with that, like that you will do things that, that um, are not what I would have done. But, so I don't necessarily apply that to other people because mm -hmm. I can't, and it's not to say that I, I apply that universally, that I'm always making sounds that I don't think are good. Mm. Um, but there's, there's um, yeah, there's just a little bit of a, a question mark. And I think some of it also came from like the kind of compositional practice of like composing for myself as an improviser. Like what decisions do I want to make ahead of time? What decisions do I think are important to make? What decisions do I think are more ambiguous or, or, or better served by being decided in the moment or by someone else or, or things like this? So there's like... A, a distance to that, that that I think is related to that, but not in the same way because it's that's not there isn't a precomposed component to what we're doing here. Um, and as much that like I guess we know each other, we have humans, we've made this, some decisions about what's going to happen, but not in the way that that I'm sort of trying to answer the question. Not with like definite material. You mean. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so yeah. not in that way. I but mean, even, I mean, I think for me, there's like this danger of things being defined entirely by avoidance for sure yeah and so like i've gone through different periods of being very attracted to music that is seeking to be different or or, or, or not something else and then i i guess i would have a a worry about that as well yeah like, for sure which is which is why it's an apprehension and not like a, a strict avoidance because hmm. then then you're very much defined by the same contour you know it's just one side or the other but there is there is just um a part of me where that's like and, and and that isn't to say like i'm not the type of improviser where let's say we're playing and like we arrive at a place where i'm going to do a thing where i'm going to specifically undercut it like i'm not i don't approach that in a cheeky manner because i think some people have like a subversive thing that they like to do and i do like like fast changes and things like this but like i don't generally subvert in that way mm -hmm. so if something like that happened I, I'd, I'd go within and i'd contribute and i'd, I'd, I'd do sudden changes but there is that can sometimes lead to that, like where like this is good, so I will stop, 
regardless, or this is good, so I'm going to change it immediately. So I don't necessarily relate to it in that way. Um, which I think is, yeah, I haven't played with many people that way, but that, I know that is a kind of a, I, I'm cheeky in life, like in the way, like when we talk, but like in playing, I don't, I don't, I tend to be a little bit more agreeable, I think. Affable. Um, affable. <laughs> Renowned for my affability. Um, but yeah, it is interesting that one. And it manifests a lot when I'm, because I've played a lot of instruments in my life and I have a lot of instruments. And because I like to vary the things that I do when I do these, I'll often end up, like right now, we're both playing sort of guitar. So there's, there's a circumstance in which, like, I don't do this a lot. So there's um, there's some baggage that come with that, and one of them is the like, oh, my fingers can can do this, but like, that's not what I that's not what I want, you know. Do you want it? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I like I like to know what what's going to happen where 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 I put my fingers. Yeah, yeah. I don't find it as I don't find it as exciting personally to now to try and put my fingers in places where I don't know what they're going to do. But that's because I guess the more you play, the less likely that is that you're mm. going to have no idea. So, uh, and then, uh, yeah, I guess on guitar you can, like at the beginning, you can do a thing where you avoid fretting notes and things and you play sounds where they're, they're more unpredictable. But it's a harder space to inhabit on this instrument for me. And so... Yeah, I guess I'm less inclined to kind of try and do that for like a whole period of playing or something. But I like to have it as a as an option. Mm. Okay. Shall we play a bit more? Yeah.
If you'd like to support the making of these videos, please join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.